Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, co-host of this program with County Board Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have a department head with us that has involvement with all 22 departments countywide, Mr. Tim Finch, our finance director. Tim, welcome. Thanks, Adam. Glad to be here. Thanks well, good for to have me. you here. And as many of you, I'm certain, are aware, if you've been following this program, Tim generally joins us this time of year because we're in the midst of working on our 2008 budget process. And so far, so good, in great part because of Tim Finch and his staff and the work that they do in the finance department. Thank you. Tim, please start by sharing a little bit about yourself and when you started as the Sheboygan County Finance Director. Sure, glad to. I've been in Sheboygan since the year 1999 and uh, started in the finance department May 1st of 2000. And it's been a fun ride ever since. Never boring, I can say every, every day is a little bit different, so very enjoyable. Um, we do a lot of things in that department, as you well know, um, uh, get into a lot, of, a lot of areas, so it's, it's always a challenge. So finance department, as I mentioned, you know a little bit about a lot. You deal with every single department countywide and have the key role of making sure that the budget is prepared and that departments are working within budget parameters that Bill Gehring and the, the county board establishes. We work very closely with the finance committee. But for our viewers' sake, what are, the, what are the key roles and responsibilities of the finance department? Sure. And then I'll tell you, too, what the most challenging department is to, to, to manage. Um, uh, budgeting uh, is a big thing for, for governments, all governments, city, county, uh, lo more local level. Uh, that's huge. So that's probably the number one thing that we do. We do external and uh, internal financial reporting. We're responsible for that. Accounts payable, accounts receivable, internal auditing. Uh, debt management is a very interesting area. Uh, internal controls, financial forecasting, financial policies and procedures, and something that I do a lot is financial analysis, giving you or Bill or county board or finance committee information on uh, different things we might be considering and what's going to be the financial impact of doing those things. And with all that going on annually, uh, as I said, the most important policy document that you help prepare is the annual county budget. It's that time where we're right in the midst of developing the 2008 budget, mm -hmm. though it's 2007. We're preparing for 2008, and we really started that process back in February, as you know. We, we, we start rolling then, but our, our kickoff was just in June, and, and we're now meeting with departments. What's the what's a general timetable? What is the process for preparing a county budget? Sure. It's, it's always interesting because we really have three years going at one time. We're looking at actual results for... The prior year, we're dealing with the current year, and then we're looking ahead to the budget for the following year. So um, it's quite a transition. But as you said, usually in February, March, uh, you and Bill will get together, start talking about what are some of the things we're looking at for the coming year. Um, usually, I'll get involved somewhere in April or or thereabouts and talk about what are the challenges going to be. In the past, it's been health insurance has been one of our big challenges. Uh, losses at the healthcare centers has been another one. So those are the things we'll kind of start to kick around. You know, you'll provide direction on what we need to look at. Uh, then we have our budget kickoff, which is usually mid-June of every year. At the kickoff, uh, the county board chairman and yourself will give targets out to each department, let them know this is what we're targeting as our goal for the upcoming budget year. That's a very important part of the process. It gets all departments kind of on board and everyone's thinking the same thing. We're shooting toward a, a target and a, and a goal. Um, during July, usually by July 6th, usually, uh, we ask the departments to kind of put their budget information together. And then um, by July 13th, they have to submit their information to the finance department. We help them compile that. July 2nd through August 10th, they meet with yourself and myself. We're kind of the first line of defense in the budgets to make sure that they meet that established target and goal and give them some advice. Maybe if there are things in their budget that mechanically are wrong, what they can do to correct that. Uh, and then July 16th to the 24th would be when they go to their liaison committee, get the approval of their committee. That's the second line of defense to make sure that budget parameters have been followed and that goal is still out in front. Uh, the li liaison committee is really, it's their, it's their budget. Department heads prepare it. It's really their budget and they have to take ownership for it. So this would be the time when they, they would do that. August 13th to September 21st, will be when the Finance Committee will meet with those committee members, department heads, go over each and every budget. 
more questions will be asked at that point, of course. Um, and then on October 30th, the county board public hearing and line by line review. The county board will go through every single budget and they'll go through uh, by line item and they can ask any question they want. They can uh, make a recommendation to change a budget, add something to a budget. So that's the chance for the county board to have their say as a whole, as, as one body, on what they want to do with the, the budget. Also, that's the point when the public could be involved and asking questions. Um, I think they can ask questions. Uh, um, I believe they have time to speak at the public hearing. Mm -hmm. So if they have some comments on their budget process, county government, that's their opportunity to do that. November 6th, it would be the final adoption date of the budget for Sporting County. So we get a little breather in the months of December and January, and right. it really starts gearing up for the next year. It's almost a year-round process. You, you were kind in, in emphasizing that Chairman Gehring and I have a role in establishing the goal and targets, but certainly, as you know, and I want our viewers to appreciate that, really it's a consensus building process because though Bill as chairman or the, the county board chair, whoever he or she is in the future, have an important leadership role there. We work with the executive committee, we work with the finance committee, mm -hmm. and ultimately we have a, a county board leadership forum where we really try to get the full board behind establishing a goal. Tim mentioned a goal a number of times, and that's where the board establishes a, ultimately a goal that we're going to have a levy decrease or we're going to hold the line or a modest increase, and I think that's helped position us for success the last few years. You, you did a nice summary going through the roles and responsibilities, departments, liaison committee. Uh, as you know, Tim, right now we're meeting with those individual departments. Give me a sense, or please give our viewers a sense of, you know, the role right now of the department, the department head. What is it that they're really doing to develop their budgets? Sure. Um, after the budget kickoff, department heads have the responsibility to go back to their departments and start crafting that budget. And they'll use, usually the bigger departments will have a number of staff involved. They have to look at their last year's budget, uh, what they see coming up in the future, and start putting their, their numbers together for presentation to their, their committee. So the department had really kicks it, or they start the, the initial work of actually putting that, that budget together. Um, involved in that process, you know, as we mentioned before then, is they come back and they review it with you and with myself to make sure that it's going to meet that goal and target. And if it doesn't, talk about ways that we can um, tune it or make some adjustments so that we'll, that we'll meet the established target. Now for 2008, the goal that the executive committee, the finance committee, and ult ultimately the county board established was to have a tax levy reduction. First reduction in 21 years. Though all the targets were a modest increase, so most departments, most, I must emphasize, are going to receive a little over 3%. So both a, a levy reduction but an increase for most departments, which is a pretty nice situation to be in. Let's give our viewers a flavor for our total expenditures. I know you brought some charts with you today. Just to first focus on the big picture, what are the total expenditures for Sheboygan County? Sure. Glad to, Adam. I'm going to hold the chart up here and hope that it stays fairly steady. Um, for 2008, this is our preliminary budget. This was developed at the time that we set the targets for the departments. These are the numbers that we, we began with to develop those targets. So, uh, of course, they'll change over time as we go along. But you can see for total expenditures, the, the large departments in the county, Health and Human Services, which is the kind of, I'm not sure what color that is, blue. <laughs> I must be colorblind, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, $49 million in total expenditures, that's, that's our largest department uh, by far. And then um, gen just general governmental operations, also very large at $29 million. That would include Register of Deeds, County Clerk, uh, Clerk of Courts, District Attorney, just a myriad of departments that do general government operations. Um, there's some of the big hitters. One I want to point out actually didn't, um, come out too well in the graph, we tried to blow it up and we lost a number here, but this is for the remaining facility at the healthcare centers, Rocky Knoll. That's 5.2 million. And uh, as I know you know, Adam, last year that was uh, $6.1 million for the healthcare centers. So there's been a reduction there as a result of the sale of Sunny Ridge. So uh, expenses in total have come down as a result of, 
uh, of that. I think for 07, we were closer to 150, 155 million. Correct. Yep. And we're looking at 144 million. So big picture, total expenditures for 08 are anticipated to be about 144, 145 million. Then what if you just turn to the property tax levy, which is on the minds of a lot of citizens in Sheboygan County. If, if we just focus on the tax levy, the property tax levy, how does that picture change? Who are our big hitters now? Sure, it, it's interesting because it is different. Uh, the top uh, department, top tax levy department in the county right now is the Sheriff's Department, which is the yellow one at the bottom, about 13.3 million, uh, which actually surpassed the uh, Human Service Department, I think about two years ago, it um, surpassed the Human Service Department, which is number two, at about 12.7 million. So the yellow and the purple, uh, the two biggest, tax levy departments in, in the county. Um, and also, you know, the other large hitters we have here, uh, we still have the health care centers at about $5 million in, in tax levy there. Highway department, $4.5 million. Debt service continues to be a large number. However, it is going down, and that situ situation is improving quite a bit. And it is actually part of the reason for the being able to reduce the levy in 2000 Eight, as you know, is because our, our debt service is dropping. So a total levy, or a total expenditure of about 145 million, total property taxes out of that 145 million, closer to 45. This is again anticipated for 08. And the big hitters, if, if folks are wondering, well, who predominantly is drawing from that tax levy? As you said, the Sheriff's Department, the Health and Human Services Department, the healthcare centers, even though we have now gone from two to one facility, uh, it's still about a $5 million draw on the tax levy. Highway is in the big four, then followed by debt service. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Sure. Okay. Uh, Tim, as you know, in 1999, the then county uh, coordinator and county board changed the way we came about the budget a little bit differently. They began to give targets and specific goals to committees. How has that worked over the last five years? How did that affect the levy? Sure, glad you, Bill. Um, actually, I've got a, another chart here that I'll, I'll show, which graphically show, will show the viewers what's happened. Uh, you can see it starts back in 1991, comes all the way out to 2008. And in 1991, we were about um, $7 per thousand for a rate. And then it kind of started to slide and, and drop down in uh, 1995, 1996, then came back up uh, strongly in 1999. 2000, and 2000 was, I believe, was a time when the new budget process was established. And one of the, the goals of that, I believe, was to kind of stabilize the tax rate and, if anything, maybe have a, uh, a slight downtrend, but, you know, to eliminate those, those swings. And it's very successful. As you can see, from 2000 to 2004, uh, we stabilized it. It began to drop a little bit, but not in a kind of a, a wild pattern. Now, from 04 on, it's dropping fairly significantly due to a couple of things. One would be the state mandated tax levy limits went into effect. Um, so that pretty much um, put us on a downward track, plus some other good things have happened in Sheboygan County to bring that rate down. Uh, selling of Sunny Ridge has saved us a considerable amount of money and will save more in the future. Uh, debt service is going down. That's a, a very positive thing. Health insurance plan changes. Some of those have been d seen dramatic effect on our budget. So a number of good things, real, very good policy things have happened to bring that down. So the effect is in 2008, we're expecting right now a preliminary basis for the tax rate to be 525. Okay, that's really fantastic. Uh, are there any exter external limits on what we can tax if we decided we needed to repave all the county roads in one year? <laughs> could we do that? Or did somebody tell us, no, we couldn't change the levy that no, much? Yeah, the short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we wouldn't want to do that. And there, there are still two limits in effect. There's one limit that's been out there since 1993, which is a rate limit. It's not really a factor for us right now uh, because we're well above that rate limit. But that is still in effect. Um, so if we would increase our, our levy significantly enough, we could bump into the rate limit. But right now, um, what's, hitting, what's uh, limiting us right now is, is the levy limit. And um, last for, for this year, it was 2.36%. For um, 2008, it's 4%. And it's state-mandated 
our proposed state mandated limit. We're, of course, um, going to be below. That's not a factor because we're actually going to drop the levy, or that's the plan to drop the levy. So we're really not affected by those limits, but we, we could be. Other mm -hmm. counties will be. Okay. We really have been doing well uh, with the rate going down, and next year perhaps the levy actually going down. But what challenges do we face in the future? What might it have major effects down the road on what we needed to tax? Yeah, we still. Uh, in my opinion, the long-term biggest challenge that we have, and it's shared by many other governments, is just the compounding of wage and benefit increases. Each year we're looking at between 2.5 and 3% across the board increase, plus we have normally we'll have step increases for, uh, for uh, employees on top of the across the board. That's the biggest long-term challenge we have because that continues to compound every year. Um, the only way to address that is to try to be as lean with your staff as you possibly can be. And we've made some strides in that area. Uh, Rocky Knoll will continue to be a challenge just as Sunny Ridge was a, was a challenge for. Healthcare is very expensive to provide, so that'll be an issue which we have to, we have to address that. Unfunded mandates and reductions in federal programs such as the Intergovernmental Transfer Program, which uh, lost us a huge amount of money for support of our, our healthcare centers. Um, that's been a problem, and just general unfunded mandates from the state level are more and more difficult to, to deal with. So we have those challenges. A positive note, health insurance is not as big an issue as it was a number of years ago. So that's, uh, although it's still a long-term issue, not nearly as much as it has been. Okay, thank you, Tim. Sure. Good news, I mean, good news on the budget front, good news with the trends we've seen uh, the last five, six years. There's some real positives that uh, certainly Chairman Gehring and the full county board, I think, feel pretty good about. But during this process of addressing the Sunny Ridge and that very emotional trying period and a gut-wrenching decision by the county board, uh, some of the other um, reductions in programs and services that had to be made to either stay within state levy cap requirements or just simply not have significant increases in the tax levy. So, but during that process of holding the line on the taxes, we've also made some decisions to invest in this community. Uh, some major capital projects have the county board has invested in to, for the benefit of lo the local economy and, and the quality of life in this community. Please share with our viewers what some of those capital improvements have been of late. Sure, quite true. A uh, number of good things continue to happen at the airport, which we're able to develop a considerable amount of federal and state funding. So those projects have been very beneficial to the county, and they've been pretty cost-effective to, to do, too. Uh, runway and hangar expansion continues at, at the airport. Uh, primarily right now, the runway 321 extension is going to um, create the situation where they can do bring in larger aircraft, plus they can fuel for longer flights. So it's going to give them capability, a very nice uh, enhancement to their capability out at the airport. Right here at UW Sheboygan, the new Inf Information Technology Center is, I believe, complete or very close to being uh, complete. Beautiful, just incredible. Um, I know you've been through it. I haven't been through it yet, but I hear it's uh, amazing. Uh, Sheboygan County uh, funded, funded that development, and recently the science edition out here. So UW Sheboygan has seen some of those good projects that have been funded by the, by the county. Uh, working on a phone system upgrade to get better technology in our phone system. New software at Health and Human Services, which is going to replace some aging software that really doesn't give them the capability that they need there. It's been a, a big, big project. Uh, expansion of the inner urban trail. If you're a hiker, bicycler, you'd be real interested that they're trying to hook up with Ozaki County and have the trail continue uh, from there all the way up into Sheboygan. So, they're working on um, expanding that to be able to, to link up there. Ongoing roof replacement, not real exciting, but things that we, we have to do in a number of county buildings. The highway department, um, they're not noticed unless there's a problem out on the road or folks aren't plowed out in time, but they do some very important work and, and they're investing in our infrastructure as well. The tragi tragedy that happened in Minnesota with the, the bridge and recently there was some attention on our infrastructure here in Sheboygan County and it sounds like overall our bridges are in pretty good shape. But the highway department and the county board also play an important role in the 
maintenance and upkeep of our infrastructure, do they not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the um, highway department, uh, one big project they're going to be working on in the next year or two is uh, Superior Avenue upgrading um, that road. Um, so, yeah, they do an, an amazing job. Um, Five-year plan is an, a whole other budget process unto its own. It's really a separate budgeting route than the normal budget. So it, it's really kind of a, another budget that we work on throughout the year, and a number of folks have a hand in that, and the executive committee kind of has the final say in what's going to happen, and then the county board, the ultimate say in what's going to be funded in those projects. And the five-year plan that Tim just alluded to, that's a capital improvement plan that the county board establishes. Tim has a leadership role with pulling that together. The finance committee, executive committee, have pulled that together. And it's, it's not just looking out six months or a year. It's, it's literally looking out five years and planning for those capital improvements. And probably the most significant one you mentioned, in addition to the airport and the highway and some of those ongoing improvements, is right here in the very facility we're in. Uh, UW Sheboygan has seen just tremendous attention the last three, four years by the county board, whether it's the new Acuity Technology Center or the, the uh, science building, and just, just beautiful facility. And if you get a chance, if you haven't been out here to UW recently, and we had the new dean, Al Harderson, just with us, what, last month, Bill, mm -hmm. uh, come on out and take a look at this facility because this is the community's facility. A lot of people don't recognize that it's a county building, county building and grounds, run and operated by the state, but just a fantastic facility and would encourage you to take a look at it if you haven't. With all this going on, with 22 departments and, and departments trying to work with budget constraints and specific targets to, to, and the infrastructure improvements that go on, whether it's new phone system or putting a new roof on a building, some of the things you just have to do. How does the county board go about establishing priorities? If they only have so much money to work with, how did they decide where to spend it? Well, the budget process is really where, where it all begins. And kind of supplementing that is the one thing that we've had in the last few years is the Pepsi program, which is where a program prioritization process that uh, was hosted or um, implemented by the executive committee. Uh, each chair of each uh, standing committee was involved and took every program in the county, threw them on the table, and evaluated every single one and came out with a, a ranking system. And departments have used that in determining if they have to make cuts to the department. They've used that process, that ranking system, to look at what are the top priorities. And uh, I think that's going to continue to be very effective. So they use that. The five-year plan, as we mentioned, is another budget kind of within the overall county budget. So within the normal budget, the five-year plan, and then the Pepsi process, there's the prioritizing really goes on with the, within those, those documents. You mentioned earlier the importance of the, the public getting involved. They can attend the, the hearings at the county board to have input on the budget process. But you and I both know that because of the timetable and, and time and effort involved in developing that process, that budget, the earlier you get involved, the better. And you mentioned that the budget, you know, is developed predominantly by the department head and, and their staff, presented to the liaison committee. If you were, what would be your advice to the citizenry of Sheboygan County if they wanted to get involved with the budget process? What's probably the best vehicle for them to do so? Well, the public hearing is where they could speak. If they wanted to speak to the budget or county government, that would, that's going to be on um, uh, October 31st, uh, 6 p.m., and the fifth floor of the, of the courthouse. They would come, they come and they could speak on the budget or ask questions, or, and they can hear. They'll hear every single department will be reviewed as far as the, the budget process. So that's probably the best place for them to have input and ask questions on, on the Sheboygan County budget. But earlier in the process, at the liaison committee level, yeah, so uh, are those all open to the public? Can people attend in individual committee meetings and discuss the budget or provide input at that time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any, any of those meetings is open to the public. And uh, finance committee meetings as well, those are open. So if um, a citizen wanted to come and hear the department pitch their budget to the finance committee and see how that process works, they could come to the, those are held in the administration building. 508 New York Avenue, usually in room 119, sometimes they'll go up to the third floor, but mm -hmm. yeah, th those are, that's where the rubber really meets the road, and you know, a lot of the work and discussion about what's going to be in budget takes Excellent. place, so. Excellent. Yep. Thank you, Tim. 
We only have a couple of minutes remaining, and I hope you got a nice snapshot or flavor for the overall budget process. Very nice overview, yeah. Tim. Uh, any last areas that you wanted to say a few words about, or your finance department in particular? Uh, I, the finance department, the people are great in my department. I couldn't do what I do with, without them. So uh, uh, big, big uh, pat on the back to each and every one of them. They're incredible. Uh, just in general, county budget process here, this year has been very, very positive. I mean, the first tax levy reduction in 21 years, quite amazing, really, when you think about it. So it's, this has been a little bit more fun to work on this budget. I would agree. Now we just have to deliver. <laughs> That's right. Now we have to deliver. Then next year, hope that we can right. meet the higher expectations Deli of the community. Yep. Deliver again. Right. Well, Tim, thank you for taking the time to join us today and putting sure. together the charts and all the work you do. We sure appreciate your le leadership as finance director. My pleasure. Thanks, Adam. And thank you for joining us. On behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring and the Sheboygan County Board, we're pleased that you could join us today to learn a little bit more about Sheboygan County government and how it works. If you have any questions or you want to get involved with the budget process, don't hesitate to give us a call. The county clerk's office, Julie Glancy, she's outstanding, and she can tell you about the respective liaison committee meetings, where they are, when they meet. You can go online. We have Sheboygan County website to get additional information. Or don't hesitate to contact the county board chair or my office, 459-3103. 459-3103 if you'd like to get more information. So again, on behalf of Bill Gehring and myself, thank you for joining us.